Starting off at number 10 now, we have the Murfreesboro Mud Monster. In 1973, a young couple went for a romantic drive near the town of Murfreesboro, Illinois. They parked up by the river. Later on, they heard a piercing roar, which they described as sounding like an eagle shrieking into a microphone. They quickly turned off the radio and scanned the area. Another horrific shriek came and the bush in front of them shook. They turned on the car lights to see a creature that would forever be burned into their memories. It was massive, wet, hairy and covered in mud. Its skin was almost translucent, as if it was an albino. For the next two weeks, it terrorized people in the town. Reports of the seven foot tall swamp monster kept increasing until one day, it just disappeared. After that, there have only been a few more reports of the Murfreesboro mud monster since. At the time, the local police chief said, a lot of things in life are unexplained, and this is another one. We don't know what the creature is, but we do believe what these people saw was real. Moving on to number nine now, we have the Little People's Village. In the woods of Connecticut, near the town of Middlebury, you can find the Little People's Village. Crumbling remains of tiny houses and structures that locals say were built for fairies. The story goes that many years ago, a man and his wife were living peacefully in Middlebury when she started seeing small fairy folk in the woods around their home. She demanded that her husband build them a tiny village, and so that's exactly what he did. Using real concrete and mortar, he built the fairies these tiny houses, complete with walkways and streets. As the village grew, he suffered a price. People say that he began to hear the fairies' voices in his head, which eventually drove him to madness and then suicide. Now, they say the crumbling ruins of the little people's village is haunted by the spirits of them, or even the ghosts of the people they drove insane. You can still visit the ruins today, and even sit in the throne that was carved at the request of the king of the little people. However, legend says the seat is now cursed, and that if you sit in it, you will be dead within seven years. Locals will show you how to get to the village of the little people, but many also warn that if you linger there too long, you will hear the voices of the little people and you too will be plunged into insanity. Next up at number eight now, we have the Kushtaka. These are mythical shape-shifting creatures found in the stories of Native Americans in southeastern Alaska. The name roughly translates to Land Otter Man. The story says that these creatures will shift between the human form and the otter form at will. They are cruel creatures who take pleasure in tricking sailors to their deaths. If they're not at sea, they live in rivers and deploy a very creepy tactic to attract their prey. The Kushtaka are said to imitate the cries of a human baby or the screams of a woman in order to lure the victims to the river. Once there, the Kushtaka either kill the person by tearing them to shreds or turn them into a Kushtaka themselves. Legend says that they can be warded off by using copper, urine, dogs, or fire. Some stories do tell of benevolent Kushtaka who will help people, but many feel it's simply not worth the risk to approach them if they ever do hear its cries in the Alaskan forest. Next up on number seven now, we have the Spectre Moose. In Maine, people have been spotting a particular moose for over a hundred years. This one stands out though, as they say it's spectral, a ghost moose, if you will. It's also huge, standing some 10 to 15 feet high. It was first seen in the early 1900s when locals described it as a huge moose with a ghostly, dirty white color and an enormous set of antlers. The coat of the animal is sometimes described as glowing faintly. The spectre moose was said to have an extremely acute sense of smell and hearing, as well as the ability to appear or disappear at will and to phase through solid objects. Hunters who came across it said they could never line up properly for a shot, as the moose would just blink in and out of existence before their very eyes. In 1938, a hunter said he saw it standing among a herd of other moose. Mises. Not sure. It was stood with two other large males, but it made them look like dwarves. He would have thought it was just a normal, humongous moose if it wasn't for the strange white glow around its body. Moving on to number six now, we have Betty Grease. In Michigan, on the beaches of Lake Superior, is a place where the sand is said to sing. Local legend says that a musical voice emanates from the sand, the voice of a Native American maid who lost her love to the Great Lakes and still calls to him from the shore when visitors play the sand. How exactly do you play the sand? Well, they say the sand can be made to sing by pressing down on it with the palm of your hand or a piece of bark. It loses its magical properties though when removed from the beach. I wasn't too sure what to make of this one at first, but I've seen a few videos on YouTube now and it definitely makes a very strange noise. Perhaps you guys check it out and see what you make of it.
Next up at number 5 now we have the hauntings at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel. This historic hotel is over 90 years old and has hosted some of the biggest stars in Hollywood over the years. The 12 story high building has 300 guest rooms and 63 suites, some of which are said to be haunted. Two of the ghosts are actually famous ghosts. Montgomery Clift is said to haunt room 928, the room he stayed in while filming From Here to Eternity. People say he moves around the occupants luggage while others have said they've seen him in the hallways rehearsing lines for his movie. Or playing the trumpet. The other celebrity haunting is someone a lot more famous, Marilyn Monroe. She is said to haunt the full length mirror that was once in her suite. Since she stayed in the hotel, the mirror has been relocated from her room, but the hauntings still follow it. People report seeing the ghostly apparition of Marilyn standing over their shoulder. Some people might like that, definitely not me. Moving on to number 4 now, we have the bus to nowhere. This one comes from Pennsylvania. Some say that this state is home to a bus that goes nowhere. It picks up hopeless people. and keeps keeps them on it forever, unless they are able to shake out of its trance. The bus is said to have no displays, no route number and no destination. It only stops for people who want to leave where they are, but have no destination in mind. Philadelphians often say they've seen it winding through the city streets. Some people also call it the wandering bus or simply zero. People say that once you're on the bus, you sit like everyone else, staring out of the window, wrapped in your own thoughts, desperate to get away from whatever pain and and despair is in your life. You can pull the cord any time when you're ready to disembark, but be warned. Legend says that time does not move the same on the bus to nowhere. Your trip could have lasted minutes, days, months, or in some cases, years. The only silver lining is that when the passengers finally do disembark, they find themselves exactly where they're supposed to be. Next up at number 3 now, we have the Snallygaster. This is a mythical dragon-like beast said to inhabit central Maryland. It was first described by German immigrants who called it the Schnellergaster which translates to quick ghost. It's been described as being half bird, half reptile and with a strange metallic beak lined with razor sharp teeth. Some even say it has octopus like tentacles. It swoops down silently from the sky and carries its human victims off to its den where it then sucks them dry of blood. Newspaper reports from February and March 1909 describe encounters between local residents and a beast with enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks and an eye in the center of its forehead. They said its screech sounded like a locomotive whistle. Now, other than the humans it hunts, the Snallygaster is also said to have one mortal enemy, the Deweyo. The Deweyo is reported to be a mammalian biped that looks like a wolf but stands like a human. It's been reported all over Maryland, and locals have said they've seen vicious battles between the two creatures. Moving on to number two now, we have Huggin Molly. You might think her name sounds quite nice. Everyone needs a hug from time to time, probably not from Molly. Generations of people from Alabama have grown up with this very creepy legend. They said Molly is a giant ghost, at least 7 feet tall, who wanders the streets of Abbeville, Alabama. Late at night, she can be seen dragging her long black skirt as she goes. If you see her, run, because if she sees you, she will chase you and she will get you. Once she does, she picks you up with her huge arms and gives you the tightest hug of your life while screaming in your ear. They say the horrible sound she makes never leaves you. There have been no reports of Hugging Molly ever killing someone, but her attacks are enough to strike fear into the hearts of everyone around. And finally at number 1, we have the Carter Brothers. In New Orleans in the 1930s, a young girl ran into a police station begging for help. She said that two local businessmen, John and Wayne Carter have been keeping her hostage and feeding off her blood. She showed them the cuts on her wrist, not quite enough to kill her, but just enough to extract blood from. The police rushed to the apartment to find four other women tied to chairs with their wrists slit in a similar fashion. In another room, they also found 12 bodies that had been drained of their blood. The police staked the place out and waited for the men to return. When they did, it took eight police officers to hold them down and restrain them. Their strength seemed superhuman. The pair were executed for their crimes and buried in a sealed tomb. Years later, another member of the Carter family died. They opened up the tomb to lay them to rest and found that the bodies of John and Wayne Carter were gone. No remains, no clothes, no trace that they have ever been there at all. New Orleans became gripped with the legend of these vampire brothers who could escape death itself. To this day, many sightings of the brothers have still been reported, especially around the apartment building that they once called home. Or perhaps they still do. They've just learned their lesson to keep things more hidden. Coming up at number 10 now, we have the Skunk Ape. 
No, that's not my nickname. This is actually one of the most famous mysterious creatures said to wander from Florida to North Carolina and even Arkansas. As you guys might expect from the skunk part of the name, this thing doesn't smell great. Ever since the first sightings of it in the 1960s, people have mentioned the horrific smell of this thing. Often you can smell it before even seeing it. When you finally do, it looks like an ape. Big, hairy, and running on two legs. For some people, the skunk ape isn't just a rumor, it's a reality. Dave Sheely is the man who established the official skunk ape research headquarters. He said there is not only one or two, but nine of these creatures living in the Florida Everglades alone. He spent most of his life trying to document them. According to Sheely, the average male skunk ape stands six to seven feet tall and weighs roughly 450 pounds. Females are five to six feet tall and weighing in at about 250 pounds. Moving on to number nine now, we have Char. Man. Ohio's Camp Comfort County Park is a picturesque place in California. It's also known for being home to many creepy spirits. There's a ghost of a bride wearing a bloody wedding dress, a woman on a horse reenacting her own death for eternity, and even a headless motorcyclist. However, none are as terrifying or as famous as Charman. Ever since a fire in 1948 killed a number of people there, there have been reports of this hideous figure wandering the area. He's said to have skin burnt to a crisp and noxious fumes pouring out of him. Some people go even further and say that this creature isn't even human at all. They say Charman is a beast, an entity that has visited people a number of times and it always goes the same way. They say their homes are engulfed in thick black fumes that send them to sleep. Just before losing consciousness, they see Charman walking towards them. When they wake up, there will be a small fire nearby, a reminder that Charman has paid a visit. Next up at number eight now, we have Turnbull Canyon. They say death awaits everyone at Turnbull Canyon. Located in Whittier, California, the canyon is known as a pretty dangerous place, as it is thanks to the mountain lions and rattlesnakes that call it home. Some people believe that the most dangerous thing there, though, is the paranormal activity. It's said that the Gabrielino Native Americans called this place the place of the devil. The Spanish killed many of them who refused to convert to Catholicism. Some say their tortured souls now haunt the canyon. Then, in the 19th century, members of the tribe who worked in the area reported seeing ghosts and witches in burial grounds there. The sightings became more more frequent and reports started of there being a satanic cult that had taken root in the canyon. They were supposedly sacrificing children from a nearby orphanage. When locals got wind of what was happening, the cult disappeared overnight. But the reports of ghosts, creatures, and hooded figures still appear from time to time. Moving on to number seven now, we have the Night Watchers. We're moving over to Hawaii now for this one. We all know it looks like paradise, but as we've seen in our last few videos, it's no stranger to some creepy urban legends. One of them is the Night Marchers. Locals say they are ghostly apparitions that can be seen walking in formation at night, never stopping, always facing forward, and there is always the sound of a beating drum echoing out in the silence of the night. Hawaiians say they are armed spirit warriors en route to a battle. They carry old weapons and are clothed in decorated helmets and cloaks. The next question is naturally, why do they appear? Well, some say they are restless souls looking to reclaim rightful territory or replay a battle gone wrong, hoping this time they can do it right. Or perhaps it's a simple ghost tale of avenging their own deaths. The creepiest theory I heard though is that they're searching for an entrance to the next world. Instead of just wandering aimlessly for it like other ghosts, they do it how a soldier knows best, in a focused, methodical manner. There are signs that the night marchers are out on the Hawaiian Islands. They are recognized by their raised torches and repeated chants. Sometimes footprints have been found, even though the night marchers are said to float a few inches off the ground. Moving on to number six now, we have the Voodoo Queen. Louisiana is a place steeped in voodoo history. For people in New Orleans, few stories rival that of Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau. She was said to be a prestigious woman who worked as a hairdresser in the city. She chatted to every customer she had, not just for the sake of it, but to get information. Eventually, she learned the secrets of everyone in the city, man and woman, rich and poor. She used this information to manipulate her enemies through voodoo. It's said she gained the power of immortality from a demonic force known by the name of Papa Legba. She wanted to do this so that she could kill innocent beings and seek revenge on those who had wronged her. Others say that she never murdered anyone and used her voodoo skills to unite people. She also blended Catholicism and voodoo to form a religion that is still practiced in the area today. She died in 1881 at the age of 87, but the story did not end there. According to local legend, she returns to life once a year on St. John's Eve to lead the faithful in worship. If you're ever in New Orleans on that night, don't be surprised if you see a ghost of the voodoo queen looking for her followers. Moving on to number five now, we have the Rougarou. We're staying in Louisiana now for this one. The Rougarou is a werewolf creature 
that has been sighted across French Louisiana for centuries. The creature is said to have all the familiar tropes of a werewolf, huge, leering, covered in fur and ready to tear any human to shreds. It differs from a classic werewolf though in that the Rougarou is said to have a genetic disorder rather than catching its disease from someone else or being cursed into it by a witch. A Rougarou is a totally normal person until one day when their condition is just turned on. Their body is enlarged and they develop an insatiable craving for raw meat. They will remain in this painful state until they complete their transformation and there's only one way to do that, to take a bite of human flesh. Those who have seen a Rougarou describe it as huge, standing between 7 to 8 feet tall with massive sharp teeth and deep glowing red eyes. It becomes its animal form on the night of a full moon. For many people, the Rougarou is far scarier than a typical werewolf because the person doesn't even know they are one until it's far too late. It could be your friend, your family member, it could be me, or it could even be you. Next up at number 4 now, we have the Skinwalkers. In traditional Navajo culture, the Skinwalker is a witchcraft practitioner who wears the skins of various animals. A Skinwalker can morph into a number of different creatures, including coyotes, wolves, bears, crows, and owls. In the past century or so, those outside of the Navajo people have also reported seeing Skinwalkers. They've been described as half-human monstrosities who run on two legs at insanely fast speeds. One woman claimed that a skinwalker appeared on a Navajo reservation land. It ran alongside her car at 60 miles per hour, darted in front and then disappeared into the night. They are often said to let out a screeching howl of laughter as they run circles around terrified people. Sightings like this have led many people to become interested in skinwalkers and want to interview Navajo tribes people to find out more about them. The problem is, there is a deep superstition among the Navajo people when it comes to talking about skinwalkers. Many of the elders believe it's not good to talk or even hear about skinwalkers, otherwise you will attract them to you. Let's hope we don't do that after discussing them in this video. Next up number 3 now, we have Stowe Lake. Stowe Lake lies in Golden Gate Park in California. It's said to be home to a ghost that not only appears to visitors, but can also be summoned by them. According to locals, the ghost of Stowe Lake was a mother whose baby fell into the lake. Now They say that she can be summoned by standing on the edge of the lake and saying, exactly these words. White lady, white lady, I have your baby. You will have to repeat it three times and then she will appear. The best place to do this is said to be next to the Pioneer Women and Children statue. That in itself is said to be quite a spooky statue as it changes expressions at night. If she deems you worthy enough then she will appear to you and immediately ask you for her baby. If you say that you have the baby, she will haunt you until the day you die. If you say you don't, she'll drag you down to the lake herself. Coming in at number 2 now we have the legend of Chloe. This is said to be the ghost of a girl that haunts Myrtle's plantation in LA. One day a teacher took a picture with one of her students on a field trip there. It has since become famous among the paranormal community. Behind them there appears to be the ghost of a girl standing in the window. She appears to be looking directly into the camera. The owners say this is Chloe and it's not the first time that she's been seen. The picture was sent to the Society of Physical Research in England, founded in 1882, claimed to be the oldest and most prestigious paranormal research group in the world. They found nobody had tampered with or edited the photograph, leading to many people saying this is proof of Chloe's existence. The photograph has now been sent around the whole world, always with a request for an explanation, but so far none have emerged. And finally at number 1 now we have the Devil Man of Algiers. We're returning again to Louisiana for this one. Algiers is the oldest neighborhood in New Orleans. This story dates back to 1938 when reports of a man terrorizing couples spread around the city. When asked to describe the man, some details were disputed, but one thing everyone agreed on was that this man was undoubtedly, categorically, the devil. He was described as having eyes like a chicken, with bright pink star shaped ears and long black horns. He also rode on thin air and shape shifted while announcing himself as the devil. The most common reports involved him terrorizing bars, attacking women and appearing before local couples. People who saw the devil man said they always felt a sense of oncoming death or dread, that they even saw their lives flash before their very eyes. Perhaps the most scary story comes from a young couple. They said as they were travelling home one evening, a strange person tried to 
to stop their car. They slowed the car and asked what he wanted. He asked for a ride to a nearby town. The couple felt uncomfortable though and so they politely declined. Later as they drove down the highway they saw the same man walking along the side of the road. They drove past him but after just 10 minutes there he was again walking by the side of the road. Again he asked them to stop and requested a ride and again they refused. When they saw him again he changed into the devil before their own eyes. They sped off again and then there he was, this time riding a brown horse. They rushed to tell the police who went to investigate. The police saw him and requested that he stops. When he didn't they fired shots into him. He jumped off the horse and sprayed the bullets back at them laughing and rubbing his hairy hands together. He was brought to jail where he quickly slipped out of his cell and into New Orleans legends. Coming up at number 10 now we have the Grunch. This one comes from Louisiana. In the early days of New Orleans there was a road called Grunch Road that went deep into the swampy woods before coming to a dead end. That is where the Grunch people lived. A strange hybrid of albinos and dwarves forced away from society and made to live in their own community. As the years went by people started to doubt the story's authenticity but it sparked up again when people started disappearing down Grunch Road. Nearby farmers reported their animals missing or finding them dead and drained of blood. Many locals now refuse to head down Grunch Road for fear of meeting the same fate. Moving on to number 9 now we have Stull Cemetery. To those that know the story, Stull Cemetery in Kansas is better known as the doorway to hell. Legend says that the devil himself chose the cemetery as his entrance from the underworld to our own. Now it's said that a tree once stood in the cemetery and an old tombstone there was inscribed with the word witch. The tree was used to hang condemned witches back in the day who were put to death by the locals. The tombstone apparently marks the burial spot of Satan's own child, a creature born deformed and covered in wolf hair. In modern times the legend has continued with reports of the ground catching fire in random spots. Pope John Paul II was said to divert his private plane around the cemetery because it was so tainted by evil. Now whether or not you believe all of that, there's plenty of videos on YouTube to check out if you're interested and I find them quite creepy. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Knock Knock Road. This one is for all of you guys watching that get very creeped out by little girl ghosts. I think they're the worst kind of ghost. Strasbourg Road near Detroit has a disturbing tale of murder attached to it. Legend says that a little girl was killed on the road in the 1940s by a hit and run driver. Ever since then people have reported the same story. They stop at a traffic light and see on the side of the road a young girl standing, just standing and staring right into your car. Whether they freeze or then try to speak to her, she slowly walks forward to the car and stares at you with deep set hollow eyes. She scans your face to try and find her killer and get her revenge. I guess you better hope you just don't look like the killer. At number 7 now we have the Char Man. This story goes that in 1948 a wildfire swept across Ojaji, California. The flames consumed a cabin where a man lived with his son. He was burned alive but the son survived, just barely though. When the authorities arrived they found a shocking scene. The father had been flayed alive. His skin had been removed from his body and peeled off. His body was just hanging from a nearby tree. The police then searched for the perpetrator. They heard a wheezing sound from a nearby bush and then suddenly the son just bolted out of it. The overpowering smell of him stunned the officers and in that moment the boy ran into the trees and then escaped into the hills. In the years since then many locals have said they've seen the char man in the woods horribly disfigured by his burns and tormented by his past. He said to creep up on the tents of innocent campers in the hills waiting for them to fall asleep. Coming at number 6 now we have Hell's Gate Bridge. This one comes from Oxford, Alabama. The story goes that in the 1950s a young couple crashed their car off the side of this bridge and drowned. Now some locals believe you cross the bridge at your own peril. One story is that if you drive your car out to the middle of the bridge and then turn off all the lights the couple will appear in your car just sitting behind you. When you turn around they'll be gone leaving a wet seat behind. The other story is that if you drive over the bridge and then look over your shoulder about halfway through the scenery behind you turns into a portal to hell just spouting fire and flames. Now whether or not you believe all of this it's enough for some people to just look for a different way to cross the river. Moving on to number 5 now we have 100 Steps Cemetery. This is located in the town of Brazil in Indiana. Interesting name for a town and the cemetery is even more interesting. It's been used for at least 150 years and in that time it's gained quite a sinister reputation for a ghostly undertaker. The story goes that as you walk up the many steps to the top of the cemetery you must count each and every step. When you reach the top you must turn towards the open field and then the ghost of the cemetery's first undertaker will appear. Without saying anything he 
He will then reveal your own death to you in a vision. Straight away you must proceed back down the steps and count each one again. If the number is different to the one that you counted on the way up, the vision was true. An added bonus is that if anyone tries to cheat and climb up or down without using the steps, a ghostly hand will push them to the ground, leaving a red imprint on their back for days as a mark of the devil. Definitely not a place to go for just a Sunday walk then. Next up at number four now we have the Goat Man of Pope Lick. I love my job because I get to say sentences like that. This is an old Kentucky urban legend about a hideous being who roams the woods across that state. Those who have seen him describe the Goat Man as having dark fur, pale skin, goat legs and twisted horns. Some people say he was an escaped circus freak, others say he was a farmer who tortured goats for Satan. Satan then repaid him by turning him into a tortured goat himself. The Goat Man is said to hide under the rusty bridge that crosses Pope Lick Creek in Louisville. Legend says he lures people onto the train tracks there and then takes pleasure in them being hit by oncoming trains. Please don't go looking for this one though guys. In 2016 a woman actually fell to her death from the bridge while looking for the Goat Man. At number 3 now we have Slaughterhouse Canyon. With a name like that you know it's not going to be a pretty story. During the 1800s gold rush a family lived in the canyon there in a little wooden shack. Every day was the same. The husband would set off into the mountains to search for gold and food for his family. Then one day he just didn't come back. Presumably injured or killed by animals, the mountain or even other humans. His wife waited for her husband for weeks until the whole family began to starve. Driven mad with the hunger and her children's cries, she put on her wedding dress, picked up a knife and murdered her children, throwing them into the river and then weeping until starvation killed her too. Legend says that if you visit the canyon today, you can still hear the mother's painful cries. Alright next up at number 2 now we have the Black Angel. This statue looks very creepy as it is. An old, worn, corroded angel staring down over Oakland Cemetery in Iowa City. A sinister appearance has helped spawn a number of different legends around her. One of them says that a pregnant woman should never walk under her lest they want to lose their unborn child. Another says that if you kiss or perhaps even just touch the statue, you'll be dead within 6 months. This is the kind of story that scares everyone off. Whether or not you believe in curses, it's just not even worth thinking about. And finally at number 1 now we have Cropsy. Many New Yorkers know the story of Cropsy, the boogeyman of Staten Island. Legend says that he was an escaped patient from a mental asylum who went on a murderous rampage. He had a hook for a hand which he would then use to drag children back to the abandoned ruins of Seaview Hospital. Pretty creepy stuff, but here's where it gets really scary. Many parents would tell this story to their kids to scare them into being cautious about strangers even if they didn't really believe the story themselves. But then in the 1970s a real killer called Andre Rand really did start hunting children in a very similar way. Was he using the Cropsy legend as cover? Either way, people now take the legend a lot more seriously. Going off number 10 now, we have the White Cemetery. This one comes from the village of Barrington, Illinois. There lies the White Cemetery. Locals say that if you have to drive past it, don't stop always keep going. They say that spirits of the dead have been wandering around outside the gates there since the 1820s. Police and other reliable eyewitnesses have reported seeing apparitions that vanish before their very eyes. Phantom cars come and then go. One time a house burned down under mysterious circumstances and in the years since then it keeps appearing and disappearing. Be warned though, they say you should never enter that house if you see it. When it disappears into the mist, you'll disappear with it forever. If that wasn't enough for you, there's also been reports of a woman with a lantern looking for a ride from passers-by. I'm sure you guys know by now what not to do if you see her. Next up at number 9 now we have the Boggy Creek Monster. If you ever find yourself in a town of Fook in Arkansas, ask them about the Boggy Creek Monster. For generations there, locals have shared stories of a creature that roams the area. They say it stands between 7 and 8 feet tall and weighs almost 300 pounds. Its chest legs and arms are covered with thick hair. Sometimes these Sasquatch-like stories are relatively recent, but the legend of the Boggy Creek Monster goes way back. The first sightings of it came in 1834. Locals reported that a wild man was roaming the area. When groups set out to find him, he retreated back into the hills. By the 1900s, sightings around the town were becoming more frequent. By the end of the century, residents of the town reported seeing the animal more often. In 1997 alone, there were 40 sightings 
beings. In all that time, people have claimed the animal was nocturnal. But in 2000, a sighting occurred in broad daylight in the Sulphur River wildlife area near the town. In the years since then, the sightings have only continued, drawing visitors in who want a glimpse of the Boggy Creek monster. Next up at number eight now, we have the Wicked Witch of Monroe. This is the story of Hannah Craner, born in 1783. She lived near Cutler's Farm Road in the town of Monroe, Connecticut. She was said to dabble in black magic. Now, according to accounts, nobody accused her of being a witch until her husband died. He was Captain Joseph Hovey. The tale goes that one night he went out for a walk, but somehow fell off a cliff. The locals didn't believe this was possible though, and rumors spread that Hannah had somehow bewitched him that he had lost his mind and then fallen off the cliff in a daze. They said she was a witch. Hannah used this reputation to her advantage. She would often demand free food and firewood or else she would curse the townspeople. One woman denied her a fresh baked pie so Hannah cursed her so that she could never bake again. She also caught a man fishing on her property, cursed him and he could never fish again. Over the years she gained complete control over the locals and that was ultimately her downfall. She had a rooster named Old Boreas which some said was her familiar, a sort of spiritual companion that witches are supposed to have. Shortly after the rooster died, she told a neighbor that her end was also near. She said her coffin must be carried by hand to the graveyard and she must not be buried before sunset. She died the next day. It was snowing heavily. The locals decided to ignore her instructions and thought it would be easier to pull her casket across the snow on a sled. As the procession started, the coffin fell off the sled and slid all the way back down to her front door. They tried and failed again. In the end, they decided to just carry her to the graveyard like she asked for. They buried her just after sundown. When they returned to her house though, they found it engulfed in flames in the middle of the snow. Ever since then, the site of her house and her grave has been attracting paranormal investigators, many of whom say her vengeful spirit still lives on. Moving on to number seven now, we have Homie the Clown. In the 1990s, every school kid in Chicago had heard the story of Homie the Clown. Many of them had actually seen him. In the autumn of 1991, there were reports of a man in a white van who stalked school kids on their way home and lured them in. If that wasn't scary enough, he was also dressed as a clown. Locals named him Homie after a character from the comedy show Living Color, but this was no laughing matter. Strange rumors began to spread about Homie. Perhaps the strangest aspect of the creepy stalker was that he seemed to be everywhere in the city. School kids all over Chicago reported seeing him. It didn't matter who you were or what school you went to, everybody avoided white vans. Nobody wanted to get caught by Homie. At one point, even the police began to investigate it, but they soon passed over the case. Sightings of Homie began to decrease by the mid 90s, and now some people are left wondering what really did happen. Was it just a made up story that got out of hand, or did Homie get what he wanted and leave town? For now, at least. Next up at number six now, we have Lake Lanier. It didn't take me very long to find countless stories online about what some people say is Georgia's most cursed lake. They say evil has seeped into the very water there. It wraps itself around any visitors who ignore the locals' warnings. The lake is man-made, created in the 1950s to provide hydroelectricity and water supply to Atlanta. The project was plagued with problems from the beginning. Funding cuts halted work a number of times. Neighboring states bickered over water flow requirements and how the water should be used. In order to fill the lake up, the government had to move 250 families, 15 businesses, and even relocate 20 cemeteries along with the corpses. Entire towns were then submerged. They say the lake was cursed for the trouble it had caused, especially to the dead. In the years since, there have been a highly unusual number of deaths linked to the lake. They range from boating accidents, drownings, to cars crashing off the road and into the water. Boats have sunk or hit invisible objects. Strong swimmers have drowned in calm conditions. Locals have reported feeling as if they were being pulled underwater by unseen hands or feeling the air leave their lungs out of nowhere. In 2011 alone, 17 deaths occurred there, cementing it in people's minds as a very cursed lake. Moving on to number five now, we have Riverdale Road. This one comes from the town of Thornton in Colorado. It lies about 20 minutes north of Denver. It's not the most famous place in the world, but it's gaining a paranormal reputation for a very creepy road, Riverdale Road. It leads to a popular hill 
hilltop overlook. One night, many years ago, a jogger was running up the road. Out of nowhere, a speeding car came over the hill and crashed into the jogger. The car sped up into the darkness, leaving the jogger to die by himself on the side of the road. They say he vowed vengeance with his dying breath, and locals say his spirit returned in anger. Now, he haunts the road and looks into every single car that passes by for the killer that took his life all those years ago. They say that if you park up on the road and turn off your engine and light, he'll think you're the one who hit him. People have reported hearing sounds of footsteps running towards them, followed by angry beating on the side of their cars and handprints appearing on the windows. If this sounds like an experience you'd like, well, at least now you know where to find it. Coming at number four now, we have the Hoosack Tunnel. This tunnel runs through the Hoosack Mountain Range in Western Massachusetts. It may not look like much, but it has a very bloody history. Construction began in 1851. It took 24 years to build, and during that time, around 200 workers were killed. This earned the tunnel the nickname of the Bloody Pit. Perhaps one of the most shocking incidents came in 1867. On October 17th of that year, fumes in the 1,000-foot tunnel ignited, causing an explosion that destroyed a hoist used to lower men, equipment, and supplies. The flaming parts landed on 13 men. The area was also flooded. Rescue attempts were made to get down to them, but they failed and the men were just presumed dead. That wasn't the case though. You see, months later, workers found out that some of the men had survived and they even made a raft to try and escape the water. In the years since then, locals swear that the 13 workers haunt the tunnel now, tied to this earth by the anger of not being saved. Moving on to number three now, we have the Devil's Chair. This one comes from the Alma Cemetery in Kansas. At first glance, it looks like any other cemetery. Gravestones, grass, nothing too creepy, but this cemetery is home to something else, something the locals call the Devil's Chair. According to legend, a farmer once owned all of the land in that area. He refused to sell his land so that it could be used as a cemetery. No matter how much people tried, he refused to give it up. Then, one day, he was mysteriously pushed in a well on the land and fell to his death. Authorities only found his body from the stench that came from the well a few days later. After the incident, locals began to call the well the Devil's Chair. They said it was cursed with the vengeful spirit of the dead farmer. The land was bought and the cemetery was built around the well. That's when the curse seemed to spread to the whole cemetery. As for the devil's chair, it was boarded up to stop anyone from meeting the same demise as the farmer. Legend says that those who have sat on the boards have been known to mysteriously disappear, victims of the farmer's vengeful spirit. Next up on number two now, we have Buck's tomb. This one comes from Maine, where you can find the tomb of Colonel Buck. He was the founder of the town there called Buck Sport, an honored figure in many people's eyes. But this story may have a dark twist to it. On his tombstone, there appears to be the strange image of a woman's leg. Locals say that Colonel Buck once sentenced the woman to death for being a witch. As she burned, her leg rolled out of the fire, along with her final curse against him. Her son told the Colonel, your tomb shall bear the mark of a witch's foot for all eternity. Legend says that his heirs have tried to clean the foot off the stone many times, but still it remains. They even tried to replace the monument twice but it still keeps coming back. These days, visitors flock to see the monument in person, but a wrought iron fence keeps them from getting any closer to this creepy tombstone. And finally, number one now, we have Chessie. You guys have heard of Nessie, right? The Loch Ness Monster? Good? Well, I'd like you to meet Chessie. In Maryland, it's not uncommon to hear people talk about the Chesapeake Bay Monster, Chessie for short. The first sightings began in the 1930s. The crew of a military helicopter flew over the Bush River, and they claimed they saw an unknown reptilian beast in the waters below. Now, at first, people weren't sure if they just made a mistake or even made it up altogether. Over the years, though, more and more sightings of Chessie occurred. They say it looks like an anaconda or a python, serpentine, snake-like, and dark in color. One thing everyone can agree upon is that it's huge, up to 30 feet in length and as thick as a telephone pole. Interest in the beast peaked in 1982 when one family apparently videotaped Chessie from their home on Kent Island. The Smith Smithsonian held a mini symposium on the tape and concluded that, among other things, this was absolute evidence that something large was living in Chesapeake Bay. They didn't go on to say that it was definitely Chessie, but that's only strengthened this legend. Coming in number 10, we have Men in Black. 
back. I mean, where do you think the idea of the smash hit comedy starring Will Smith came from? You thought it was an original idea? Yo, I thought it was an original idea. I thought Will Smith is a genius. No way, man. <laughs> well, let's be honest. Nothing is original anymore. As Picasso said, a good artist creates things. A great artist steals everything. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that he actually stole that line, too. Well, the urban legend of the men in black is pretty in line with the movie. I don't think it's as fantastical or as heroic, but the idea is that there are secret government agents all throughout the US who will come find you if you have any sort of contact with extraterrestrials. They monitor the planet and it's up to them to make sure that they don't learn about aliens. There have been many reports from people saying that they've seen some strange thing in the sky or that something landed in their backyard and then it takes off and then the next day a couple dudes in black suits come in who present themselves as FBI agents and they'll come to their house and ask them some very strange questions. And even in some cases they can be threatened or things could get quite ugly. Well threats from strange dudes in a black suit? Yeah, that would work well for me. I'm threatened by anything. I'll keep all my alien secrets to myself after something like that. Thank you very much. If I see something in my backyard, I'm reporting it to nobody. And guys, make sure you hit that like button because it really helps us out. Alright, let's move right along. Number 9 we have The Hook Man. Hush now. No more screaming, no more running. It's time to die. The Hookman is such a famous urban legend. Not one, but two movies were made about this urban legend. <laughs> Coming in number eight, we have Skinwalkers. This is one of the oldest Native American legends, and the legend has stretched into our folklore as we see skinwalkers represented in television and movies all the time. The true form of a skinwalker is unknown. I mean, Che right here could be a skinwalker right now. We don't know his true form. Well, some people say that they start off as humans, and then they get the ability to transform, and others say they are truly beasts who can turn into humans and other creatures to try to fool us. But at the end of the day, does it really matter what the true form of a shapeshifter is? They can become whatever they want. You think after being a certain form for a while, you forget what it's like to be your true self. It would be like method acting when you get too into a role and you can't remember who you really are. Well, maybe Daniel Day-Lewis is a skinwalker and he's just not as evil as the rest. Skinwalkers have been known to use their powers of transformation to lure people into traps and kill them. Sometimes it's said that they can use parts of dead humans as food and other stories tell of them needing human parts for rituals to continue their shape-shifting ways. And at number seven, the abominable snowman. Abominable snowman sighting in Spain caught on camera. That's right folks, the proof the world has been waiting for has finally been uploaded. A Sasquatch or Yeti or abominable snowman or just plain old Bigfoot, whatever you want to call him, has been spotted supposedly. There are so many clips just like the one you just saw on YouTube. You can check it out for yourselves. Well, we think that this is the best footage we've ever seen of this thing. Coming in at number six, we have the Bunny Man. There are several different stories of the Bunny Man and almost all of them are gruesome. The most common is that he's a man-man who will walk through dark alleys or in the forest or anywhere with poor visibility and he will follow people. He sports a bunny mask and has a massive ax. In the shadows, he creeps slowly, watches his prey and waits waiting for the moment when they aren't protected. In those few moments when their guard is lowered, he will spring out and slam his ax into their face, taking their body back into the darkness. There have been some iterations of the bunny man that say he doesn't wear a mask, but his face has been horribly mutilated to make it look as if it was a bunny's. Skin has been grafted onto his head to resemble ears, surgery done on his nose and lips to reveal buck teeth and a rabbit-like nose, and disgusting scarring all all over his once human image. This disfiguration that happened to him is what caused him to go mad. Moving right along just like that, number five, Mothman. Hey, is it possible the famous Mothman of West Virginia could be a mysterious giant eagle? 
Or is it still just a big, mysterious unknown? The Mothman of West Virginia has been a long time urban legend dating back to the 60s. And there has been several movies and documentaries based on this creature, along with a ton of real people recounting their experiences and sharing their pictures and videos. It's such a crazy urban legend that, you know what, it might be true after all. The sightings of Mothman continued for months throughout the Point Pleasant area. The Mothman was once seen again on the Silver Bridge and many people believe that the creature was trying to warn people. And at number four, we have Baby Train. Well, let's step away from the horrifying urban legends for a second to think about something that could be true and has been a tale told all over America. Even though the Baby Train sounds like something where people would sell babies to the highest bidder, this urban legend is much more wholesome. Now, this urban legend is attached to a more forgotten time, which makes it both hard to prove and disprove. But it's the idea of small towns that were positioned close to train stations. These towns were so close that when the trains came in and blew its steam whistle, everyone could hear. Now, for some of these places, they would have an early morning train come through town. If it would blow its whistle around 5 a.m., this would wake up the whole town. For most of these fine folks, 5 a.m. was too early to get up, but too late to go back to sleep. So all of these people waking up next to their partner decided to just make a little hanky-panky. This was a time before we had phones and Netflix. There was nothing else to do. So this idea of this urban legend is that the towns that had the baby train would see a baby boom from all of the early morning, you know, whoopies. These people are reproducing faster than Joey Chestnut clears a plate of food. Moving into number three, we have the New Jersey Devil. Have you guys heard of this? Claiming that this child would be the devil. When the night came that Jane went into labor, there was a terrible storm that shook the entire house as her friends and family gathered to help her through the pregnancy. The child was born normal, but it began to change into a deformed monstrosity. Its feet turned into hooves, its head resembled a goat. Leathery wings sprouted from its back, and a forked tail whipped violently around the room. The child screamed and thrashed its tail at anyone trying to hold it down. This is a crazy tale that might actually just be true, considering the NHL team is named the New Jersey Devils. Could this be because of this urban legend? Rumor has it a woman had her 13th baby and said, let the child be the devil. Although they tried to exercise it, shoot it, and kill it, it was deemed indestructible. And there have been 13 sightings of this creature throughout history, so it's gotta be true. 13 people have seen it. Coming in number two, we have Charman. We had a couple sweet points in a row, and that's the only nice ones you're gonna get. For a second, I thought you were gonna say Charmander, because I was like, that's real. Pokemon are real. They are. But in this situation, we're talking about Charman, which isn't Charmander. Well, Charman is one of the most horrifying urban legends to come out of America. It combines some classic tales with some very specific details that make it seem like the whole thing could be true. The story starts back in 1948. There was a house fire, a father and his son try to escape unharmed, but the flames are too strong and the two of them are burned all over their body. While waiting for help to arrive, the son is looking at his disfigured self and loses his mind. He then kills his own father. Is this real life right now? When help eventually does arrive, the son lays on the ground and the police think that the boy, well, he's dead from how badly he's burnt. They leave for a moment and uses this as an opportunity to escape. From this point, he has to live in the woods, hunting down people and killing them, taking what he can so he can continue to survive in the wilderness and feed his insane bloodlust without anyone finding him. And coming to the number one spot, we have the Boggy Creek Monster, aka Bigfoot, aka the Southern Sasquatch. In the early 1970s, the media had a field day about a creature known as the Boggy Creek Monster, aka the Southern Sasquatch. The Boggy Creek Monster was being reported on in the news because it was accused of attacking a local family, as well as destroying and stalking livestock. This one tops our list because this might be the most famous urban legend creature that might be real of all time. Have you spotted one before? A Sasquatch? Yeah. Real life? Yeah. No. Have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the anticipation to be like, oh, has he? Uh, no. And it was like, absolutely not. I've never seen it. <laughs> no. Well, there's been five feature films that have been made about this specific folklore, urban legend, and countless other documentaries exist as well. The whole town has even turned this guy into a tourist attraction in the surrounding town. And at number 10, we have Alcatraz Island of Evil. I saw Alcatraz from across the water in San Francisco Bay, and I have to say, it is a very, very freaky place to look. 
look at. Before Alcatraz was even a high security prison, Miwok tribes of California were not about the rock. They thought that the sandstone rock that protrudes from the middle of San Francisco Bay was inhabited by evil spirits. When the prison was built on the rock, it became one of the most notorious high security prisons of all time. It's presumed that all who tried to escape the jail were killed. If the fall into the rocky water didn't kill you, the sharks that infested the water might. The prison was infamous for the criminals it hosted, their somewhat inhumane confinement and the murders that happened within the walls of the jail. Alcatraz stopped functioning as a prison in 1963, but the memories of the building's brutal era live on. In 1946, three men were killed in a bloody standoff in Block C. Now these days, National Park employees believe that C Block is haunted. Security hear clanging and dissonant screams at night, and it's reportedly haunted by a troublemaking ghost called Butcher. He was a hitman killed by another prisoner. The most haunted place in the building, however, is allegedly Cell 14D, a solitary confinement hole. Now the hole is said to turn men crazy. Now, criminally insane, to me, is a lot worse than simply being a criminal. It seems that Alcatraz was always an island of evil spirits, but by building a jail there, the United States government added a few more to the mix, whilst damning others to expire there. Coming into number 9, we have the story of the Billywhack Monster. Ah yes, the legend of Billywhack. So this Californian legend goes all the way back to the 1940s, but it is still going strong today. The old Billywhack Dairy Building is situated in Santa Paula in Ventura County. The building was indeed an old dairy and was run by August Rubel, a German national living in the United States. Rumour had it at the time that Rubel had a secret lab under the dairy where he was working with the government to create a super soldier for warfare. In 1943, he had to go back to Germany, which was tricky as he was working for the Allies and war had already broken out. It seems that Rubel was killed by a German landmine and was unable to return to the Billywhack Dairy. Some years later, a strange creature was reported in the area around the now abandoned dairy. Most of the reports came from students at Santa Paula High School who called police to let them know that their cars were being hit by rocks. Who was throwing the rocks? Apparently a weird looking large animal. Some students even reported being set upon by a large white humanoid looking creature with goat like horns and razor sharp claws. It seems something fitting that description terrorised hikers nearby in 1964. It wasn't just the monster causing trouble either, locals were getting frustrated with the teams of vigilantes turning up to try and hunt the beast. Coming in at number 6, we have the legend of California's skinwalkers. In Navajo culture, a lot, a lot, lot, lot of people believe in skinwalkers. Skinwalkers are said to be witches who ascend to their superhuman powers by sacrificing, by murdering a close member of their family. These skinwalkers can then take the form of an animal of their choosing, although they usually appear as wolves, owls and coyotes, foxes and crows. These witches are said to be extremely dangerous and you do not want to encounter one for fear of invoking their wrath. These skinwalkers are said to be most commonly found stalking deserts in California, like Death Valley. They are also said to appear in the Mojave National Reserve and Joshua Tree. When Nick Redfern visited Joshua Tree in August 2010 for a VH1 documentary, he said he came across a woman who helped save injured wolves and other animals in the area. Very nice of her. Despite saving the wolves, she was deathly terrified of meeting a skinwalker, so much so that she wouldn't even utter the S word. Coming into number 7, we have Turnbull Canyon. Turnbull Canyon was dubbed the dark place by local native tribes, and that nickname has more to it than simply referring to a lack of light. Back then, the native tribes would refuse to set foot there. The place became even darker when Spanish invaders forced natives into the canyon, killing those that fell out of line. Since then, legend says that every Native American killed in the canyon still haunts it today, watching passers by and waiting for the sun to rise. Many explorers feel watched when they venture out into the canyon. Not only is the canyon haunted by the spirits of the wronged natives, but it is also said to be a hotbed for occult activity. There have been reports of black robed beings making effigies in the remote area. A string of disappearances around the nearby Puente Hills has been put down to satanic activity in the canyon. To make this a triple whammy of creepy, there is also an abandoned mental asylum in the canyon. 
great. Coming in at number 6, we have the legends of Stowe Lake. The white lady is said to be one of the ghosts of San Francisco, and this particular lost soul is said to haunt the Stowe Lake area of the city. Few are brave enough to walk by Stowe Lake at night, although some zealous youths do find it funny to turn amateur ghost hunters by provoking the spirit. Now, the story goes that once upon a time, a woman was out walking her baby in a stroller. She became tired and she sat down on a bench next to the lake, taking in the sights. Another lady decided to sit down and join her, and they had a brief chat. While the woman chatted, it is said that the stroller rolled away unnoticed, either because its brakes were faulty, or they weren't put on properly, or someone abducted the child. The mother became very distressed and started frantically wandering the area, asking if anyone had seen her child. Eventually, she thought the baby must have rolled into the lake, and so she got into the water to look for her. After that, neither mother or child were seen again, and it is presumed that the woman drowned. These days, at night, her ghostly apparition still stalks the area looking for her child. Now, some versions of the urban legend say that you can summon the ghost yourself. Allegedly, if you say, White lady, white lady, I have your baby, three times over, the lady will appear. She'll then ask you, Have you seen my baby? And if you say yes, she'll haunt you, and if you say no, She'll kill you. Coming into number five, we have the Angel of Bodie. Bodie is one of many Californian ghost towns. As we know, California was at the forefront of the gold rush, but it was also heavy on the silver mining. Bodie had 10,000 residents in 1859 and was thriving in 1894 when little Evelyn Myers was born. Growing up around a mine has its dangers, but as families settled to make their fortunes, this was the life many children in the southwest of the United States came to know. Little Evelyn was nearly four years old when she tragically lost her life. Her downfall was her playful curiosity. She liked to follow the miners to work, and she would often land herself in trouble with her parents. One day, she followed a miner to work, and he sent her back home, but she was sneaky and snuck back to watch him work. Sadly, he didn't know that she was behind him when he swung his pickaxe backwards and crushed her skull. A monument was erected in her honor, and it is now said that her ghost haunts a deserted town. She can be heard laughing and giggling as she skips gleefully around her home. Don't like this one at number four. We have the story of the charred man of Creek Road. I don't like a ghost at the best of times, but charred ghosts with vacant eye sockets? No. No thank you, not today. The legend of the charred man has been told around OJ campfires for decades. The charred man is said to stalk Creek Road and the Camp Comfort County Park. Many have reported seeing the ghostly apparition of a man on fire with black burned skin and hollow eye sockets. The charred man has most commonly been spotted in the Creek Road Bridge. When a car passes the bridge, it is said that he will emerge and glare at passengers. Not only that, he comes with a stench of burning flesh, which is something I I've luckily never had to experience. Can only imagine it's truly awful though. It is said that the man leaves an imprint of ash on cars that get too close to him. Coming into number three, we have the monster of Elizabeth Lake. While Elizabeth Lake in the Antelope Valley may look like heaven, it actually has a hellish legend attached to it. Los Angeles County's largest natural lake could contain a nasty beast. Legend has it that the lake was created by the devil himself, and he placed one of his own pets inside it. If you swim deep enough, you may find a secret passage that leads to the underworld. The lake monster uses this passage to move between Earth and the Netherworld. Now, the lake was originally referred to by Spanish settlers as La Laguna de Diablo, the Lake of the Devil. This was because they were convinced of the lurking monster. In the late 1800s, a group of men claimed to have witnessed the ascension of a vast monster with bat wings coming out of the lake. Coming into number two, we have the story of the Fresno Nightcrawler. Ah, the Nightcrawler. Rumors of a strange cryptide walking around at night in Fresno, California began surfacing in the late 90s and early 2000s. There were only a handful of eyewitnesses, and reports were shaky until some strange footage emerged in 2008. CCTV video seemed to show a strange biped walking around a road. By biped, I mean that was pretty much it. The figure was all legs, walking down the street like dexterous tweezers. Or I guess a bit like possessed trousers. Ooh, I don't like it. I don't like it. The footage is grainy, but definitely strange. Why not have a watch for yourself? Many people think that this strange nightcrawler is some kind of Fresno monster, but more people out there think it's an alien. Similar cryptides have been spotted in Yosemite and Poland. What is this figure? Is it a puppet? Is it an alien? Is it an undiscovered creature? A ghost? A ghoul? Is the Fresno nightcrawler real, whatever it may be, or is it a bizarre hoax? I just don't know. Finally, 
finally coming into number one, this actually deeply unsettled me and this has got more eyewitnesses than any on the list, we have the Dark Watchers of Santa Lucia. The Dark Watchers are a legend in Santa Lucia, California and were known by Spanish settlers as Los Vigilantes Oscuro. The Watchers are regularly described as tall, sometimes giant sized, figureless dark silhouettes, often adorned with brim hats or walking sticks. They have been frequently spotted in the Santa Lucia mountains watching passers by. Now the figures are mainly spotted around twilight and dawn. No one has ever seen one up close and it is said that if a person does ever come close to one, they'll disappear. They've been regularly spotted by walkers and many believe that if they stay on the path they're on and just keep on going about their business, the watchers won't bother them. Writer John Steinbeck's son Thomas believed that he saw the watchers growing up. In the late 1960s, a high school principal reported seeing a tall man with a hat watching him as he led a group hike. When he called out, the figure disappeared. Now people still report seeing these watchers to this day. Scientists offer a number of different explanations for the sightings, with some saying that they could be Brocken spectres. These happen in certain atmospheric conditions when the sun is at a particular angle. This could explain the whole dawn and dusk thing. Others say they could be fatigue based hallucinations, but honestly, as people keep spotting them, the legend just keeps on growing. Mm -hmm.